Hello. I wanted to talk to you about bind variables and substitution strings. This is a very important topic, and sometimes I've seen people make a small mistake that can be very costly in the way our database executes. So first, uh, let's imagine we have a very simple report. Um, this is, uh, we go to a page where we see our uh, uh, our department and this, we see employees for that department. Very simple. So we would normally start something with a query like this, right? That's all we would do. Very straightforward. Now, let's say that at some point, someone comes along and says, you know what? Department, the sales department, it's going to require a completely different landing page. We have this requirement where the page is totally different. So we can't really just hide regions for whatever reason. Let's say that we're actually going to different pages. Okay. Let's just go with me on this example. So one way we would do that is this link, we could create it dynamically, right? So we could use something like this. We can do when department equals 30 and we're going to go to page three and I've created page three already and if if it's any any other department we're going to go to page two now some of you may already see this and may already know what's wrong with this uh, approach in terms of bind variables and substitution strings we are doing a substitution string for the application right here but the big problem is that we have our session as a substitution string that is inside uh, of our um, hard-coded string or of our static string. The problem with this is that every single session would create a unique SQL in our database. And this is a big deal. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna try to show you why. So first let's just quickly modify this. We're gonna switch this guy around and when we switch the query we get this link column that's the one we're going to use now i'm going to switch this to be a link column we're going to specify the target the target is the url because we are creating the complete url ourselves i have a nice edit button substitution string already defined so i can get a pretty icon and you know what, I'm going to switch this one from link to plain text so that now they look totally different. Okay. So I'm going to leave the link at the end so that it's clear. Now, before I run this, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to go into this query and I'm going to add a comment. And I'm just going to say, Jorge as the comment. The reason I'm going to do that is I want to be able to find this in the SQL area of the Oracle database. So I'm going to log in a system and I'm going to use a query that I already have here where I can query my SQL area. And SQL area, if you're not familiar with that, it's a view that holds all the information about the queries that are running in our system. And basically it's going to have this SQL text is going to hold the query that we ran up to a thousand bytes. If it's larger than that, it get we can see it in full text. We're going to have a unique SQL ID that Oracle specifies. But more interesting right now for us to verify what, what I'm going to explain is that we have how many times the records have been fetched and how many times this particular SQL statement has been executed, the executions for that SQL statement. So if I run my, my query here, what I want is there's a lot of SQL statements in there and I want those that have, um, that do not have SQL area in them because I don't want to see the SQL itself, but I do want um, I do want those SQLs that have Jorge in them, which is the comment I added, right? So if I run this view, 
SQL count. And I got to change to my SQL directory. All right, great. So view SQL count. There's no row selected. I'm going to use the repeat command in SQL CL. Repeat command will allow us to repeat whatever uh, SQL we have for as many times as we, as we specify in the first parameter, and then it's going to sleep for a while. So what we're going to say here is I'm going to say repeat. Let's just repeat it 100 times and sleep two seconds. Okay, no rows, and you see how here is running. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to save this. And at that point, Apex 5 already parsed that query. So if I go back here, we're actually getting two rows. So that's kind of interesting. Um, one row is with this. Oh, my select. Now I'm breaking this. There you go. I did control C to stop it. But one row is this validation that may have happened here where it uses as, as a subselect. And we can see here that the fetches and the executions are zero. We can see how many times data has been fetched. Fetch is zero. Executions is set to zero. So it hasn't really executed. It, it only got parsed. All right. So let's go back here. We can save it. We run it, and when I run this query, here's what happened. We have four rows here, and if I go and run our query again, for one reason or another, Apex happens to do an extra fetch, uh, probably just to make sure it's all done. I couldn't really explain it. We actually, there's actually a, a PL SQL challenge quiz that addresses this, and it was a tricky question because uh, we couldn't really explain why there was an extra fetch, but there is, go with, go with the flow. So what happens here, it actually, this query got executed one time, perfect. Okay, let's do a repeat. Uh, let's repeat it 50 times, two seconds. All right, so there it is, it's repeating. Um, let me refresh the page. There it is, so five and one, okay? So if I, go to a page and back. I just went to 10 and it just got executed twice. Great. This is fine. This is this is what we expect. If I go to sales, this is the page I told you is totally different. I'm going to page three and I got totally different information. The information doesn't really matter, right? We're concentrating with the SQL. And when I get back to the SQL, it just went to 15 and three executions. Great, right? But because the session is part of this query if i log out and log in as a different user i was logged in as a user demo um let me log in with i believe it's jay rimblas if i log in with this user and i go back here look what happened i just got an extra row with that session oracle is unable to reuse that first query the first time so if I edit a, the row and click back, it just executed twice and 10. Let's go back to demo. So even if I go back to the same user, demo, demo, now we got another row, right? We're getting one session, the other session, and, and, an, and yet another session. That's the problem with this approach. Let me show you what the right way would be and how we let Oracle reuse this. We're gonna do alter table. Sorry, we're gonna clear this information from Oracle. This is something you normally never have to do, but we're gonna do it for test purposes. We're gonna flush the share pool. That command, I'll just do flush. It clears all those SQL statements. So if I run my SQL statements again, they're gone. And we're going to fix this queries. We're going to fix this query. And instead of having the session inside, I'm going to close the string 
and concatenate with the substitution variable, the bind variable app session. I'm gonna get rid of that dot pipe and close it. All right, so that one goes to page three. We're gonna do exactly the same. I'm just gonna copy this. And from the colon to the dot, there. By doing this simple change, now our session is a bind variable and it's part of the unique SQL. And it doesn't matter that we have unique, unique sessions being created. Oracle is going to be able to reuse that SQL statement. So at this point, it just got parsed. So if I run this, I have here the select row ID check, but here's the statement that got parsed and it has not been executed yet as expected and it's fetched nothing. We're gonna save this, run it, and we're still gonna see this five and one, okay? We're still seeing the five and one that, that we expected. Now I'm gonna go into a record and back. So now we go from five and one to 10 and two, it's been executed twice. I'm gonna to go to another one, I'm back. Now we're 15 and three. I'm gonna do the repeat command, repeat 50 times every two seconds. And now we're gonna log out and I'm gonna log in back again so that I get a brand new session. And look what happened. It just, the count now went up 20, and four executions, now our SQL is being reused. And if I log out, log in with another user, and now we went to 25 and five. Uh, we're getting a little prone there with the repeat. Not to worry, 25 and five. And you see how the other SQLs dropped off and they went away? That is normal. Oracle will have the SQL area has a finite amount of memory. It's a, it's a space in memory. And at some point when a SQL has not been used for a period of time, it will drop off. There's only so much space. The problem with the, with having the session as part of this, the query and becoming a unique SQL is that now we're flooding that, that memory, that shared pool space is being flooded and we're degrading performance because SQLs that should have stayed in memory, now they don't fit and they need to be parsed again. There, there has to be a hard parse again as opposed to being a match, which becomes a soft patch, the, uh, a, so, a soft match, and the query can be reused. Finally, I'm going to refer you to these blog posts. Um, one is by Connor McDonald. It's a wonderful blog post where he says, parsing, no big deal, huh? So it's exactly this example, this situation where he goes ahead and runs a SQL with hard parsing uh, uh, that has binds, one that does not because he's concatenating and he shows the difference in timing and says, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. We say, well, it's not that fast, but what if we were doing a very complex SQL that is parsing, for example, something like all objects and segments and whatnot? And it says, well, the difference is between one second to 10 hours. I'll leave this in the notes. This is a wonderful blog post that really drives the problem home. And there's another... Um, Another blog post here by Tony Andrews, which is exactly what I just demoed. Uh, in this case, he's using a slightly different example. Also, he uses the, the session, uh, but he starts using what if you're doing classes and what if you're using other values and other things. So it's, it's worth a read uh, just to drive the point home. So keep it in mind. Be careful how you build your links. Be careful how you concatenate things and your applications will run 
a lot better. Thanks for watching.